Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today I'm going to do a bit of a different video because today I'm going to do uh, like a, a build video but it's also a case review because um, for a while now I've been wanting to build my own server. So after watching some content from Craft Computing and I should thank him and also not thank him at the same time because uh, obviously it was an idea and until watching his content it was only an idea and now it came to fruition. So after watching his content I bought these. A pair of Xeons. Now these are older Xeons that work with the likes of DDR3 etc but they've both got 8 cores and 16 threads and they both boost up to about 3.2 gigahertz or something along those lines but for a home server more than enough and they were like $50 each, which is absolutely nothing. But of course, like everything else, you know, that's the start of things. So I ended up with two Xeons, but what are you going to put them in? So that's where the motherboard came in. So here's the motherboard. As you can see, because I bought two Xeons, you've got two options. One, you build uh, a PC uh, with two CPUs in it, or you build two PCs. I chose option one. Now, as you can see from the size of this motherboard, it's absolutely huge. It's, I don't even know, it's not even EATX, it's like extended, extended or whatever it is, but it's huge. So obviously this wouldn't fit in many cases. So I was like, hmm, what do I fit it in? So then I went shopping and had a look to try and find a case it would fit in. So that's where the case for your element comes in, because let's have a look at the case I ended up getting. <sighs> Whew. Lifting that is not easy, by the way. This is the Meshify 2 XL. It's got three main purposes in life. One, giving you a workout because every time you pick it up, you're going to break your back or at least give yourself some muscles by picking the thing up. Two, if you want to play hide and seek, it's great to hide behind. And then three, it's actually a PC case. Who'd have thought that? Okay, so let's have a look at this case. It's massive. End of review. Only kidding. So it's it's a whopper of a case, and it's designed to take huge motherboards, which is why I bought it. So let's take off the panel and have a look inside. I'm not doing a full case review with this, but I'm just going to give you a bit of a run through of some of the features of the case and the benefits you get from it being so big. First of all, the glass panel just comes off like that. Isn't that nice? Good old, good old uh, fractal cases. As you can see, it's a big empty void. But if I grab the motherboard, look at that. Fits like a charm. So it takes it no bother and it, you've, you've even still got grommets around the outside which should actually go to it. I think the motherboard comes to here which uh, yeah I won't get those grommets but I will get the grommets at the top which is good because that's where the actual power supply cables are. Um, now you can see this void over here um, what you can actually do this panel can actually move this way and you can actually turn this area into a storage array where you can put multiple hard drives. There's two additional storage racks that come with it so you can mark multiple hard drives in this area. I'm not doing that right now because I'm going to be using it more of a work server rather than anything else so I'm not going to use it for storage. I've already built a NAS storage for me already so I don't need storage for it. But basically the, the, I'm getting this case because it's so big because it will facilitate the motherboard. Um, but I'm gonna. this is the case I'm going to build in so yeah, I'll give you my own thoughts about the case, apart from it being so huge, and uh, what it was like to work in. Obviously, I'm gonna have no problems when it comes to cable management because I've got more space than I could ever want to in terms of tucking them away. But we'll do the build and then I'll give you my thoughts on the case in the end. But another point that I would raise about me building the server using the Xeons and the spec that I had, it's a DDR3 board. DDR3 is effectively a dead memory technology. So unfortunately the memory tends to be a little more expensive and not just that, when you order it, it has to be shipped in so I had to wait a while for it. 
So, you know, the memory I got was this. They're 16 gig sticks from Crucial. Uh, the, so I've got four of them, which means I'll have 64 gigs in my server, which is pretty decent. Now, there's a good reason I've got a lot of memory. I'm actually doing this server for work, because you guys don't know, but I do have a full-time job. This isn't, thankfully, with the amount of views that I get, I'm not doing this for a living. Um, but I, I work, uh, um, on, I'm a developer on uh, financial applications, and the finan financial application I work on is a memory-based application. So that's why I'm building the server I've got, putting 64 gigs of RAM, should be more than enough for what I need. So that's an overview of what I'm trying to do, when, why I'm trying to build the server. So I guess, let's get on with the build and see how it comes out. So I rigged everything up and tested everything, um, purely because, as anybody will ever tell you, if you build a PC, you should always test it first, and especially this being a server. Hit plenty of problems, had to reseat the CPUs, um, but what it turned out to be, and the reason it wasn't booting, is because the memory was in the wrong configuration. I was following what it said in the quick start guide, but I changed the, uh, the dims round instead of being in certain slots and moving to others, a bit of a um, process of elimination, but once that was done, then I've now got it to the point where it's booting. The problem I've got now is, it's now prompting me for a BIOS password, which I don't have, so I'm gonna to have to contact the seller on eBay to get it, but the good news is, I can continue on with the build. So there we go, we've got the CPUs in, RAM's in, motherboard's working, so I can now move on to putting the motherboard in the extremely large case.
So I finished the server build in the Fractal Design Meshify 2XL. So what are my thoughts? Well, as a case, it was an absolute dream to work in. Um, the size gives you so many options, but the size also gives you certain challenges. And I've got the case the wrong way around, or well, I'm showing the back, um, to illustrate one of those challenges. Now, the motherboard that I, I bought to go with the two Xeons, the power 24 pin port is right at the top over here. So the only way I could get to it was the one grommet here, which means that the actual cable extension that I put in came to this point. From the power supply I've got, I was managed, I was able to reach with the cable, but just. And I wasn't able to fully tidy the cable away because it would not reach to fully do that. Without using a cable extension, I'd have been in trouble because this cable would have never reached. So that's just something to keep in mind with such a large case, you're gonna need to use cable extensions or buy a power supply that specifically has longer cables to be able to reach. The one thing I was very impressed with is that the cables from the, both the front fans and the back fan are really long and were able to reach the, 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 uh, the fan controller that was included with the case. I wasn't, I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier, but I was very impressed with the fan control. It's really good. I was able to just hook this up straight into the motherboard and it was able to pick it up and go from there. Well, the other thing I like was, is you've got this little thing here, which is like, you've got the power supply basement behind, but you're able to, it just pulls off. You're able to put all your cables in or access the hard drive bay, which is in the bottom. And then once you're finished, it just simply clicks back in, which was really, really impressive. I like that a lot. So I'm going to turn the case round and we'll have a look at how it looks from the front. So without a graphics card and thankfully without any RGB, um, I think it came out really well. Now, this is where I'm going to pay attention now to the Supermicro motherboard. As I mentioned um, in my brief interlude between um, trying to test the board and get it working, I had real trouble getting the memory in the slots. It's marked to say you should have the memory in a different slot than I, uh, than I had to pull them in to get it working, but I got it working. Had a bit of trouble. I don't know what it, I've, I've used the Hyper 212 backs before uh, and they've been really good, but for whatever reason, the clips with the latest version that I got, I couldn't get them to stay on. They kept on clip, flipping off. So I had to bend them a little bit and I managed to get them back on. Otherwise, the build went really, really well. Um, I'm having issue, issues getting it to boot purely because the BIOS is locked and I haven't got the password, so I'm trying to deal with that. I'm going to have to reset the password, either take the CMOS patchy out, or I'm going to have to find some way of actually resetting the password by using whatever means. I think I've found somewhere where you have to use some kind of DOS or something or other. I'll basically put a comment in down below when I manage to find out how to do it. But otherwise, I would say... The strategy of getting the two Xeons, getting a server motherboard, getting the memory to go with it means that I've got a really, really good home server, which I can convert in using the storage area over here by pushing this forward. I can convert it into a really, 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 really good storage server as well. So if I wanted to, say, install a VM where I can run a NAS from, I'd be able to put God knows how many hard drives in here. I'd probably have to buy extra, extra uh, drive base for it but I think you can put eight in here so even if you only buy one terabyte drives and you do raid zero you're probably going to that's 10 terabytes you're probably going to lose two so you're probably about eight terabytes of NAS space that's more than enough so thoughts on doing the server worked out a treat didn't cost me a lot of money to have a 16 core 32 thread server with 64 gigs of RAM didn't cost a lot at all. The case cost quite a bit of money, but overall, I have to say it's an absolute joy to work in. And if you need a large case for whatever reason, I would absolutely recommend it. All right, so I hope you found that information useful. Please toss a like on the video if you like it. If you've got any questions about the server build behind me, um, I think I'm gonna run a Linux server on it. Not too sure yet, I've got a server 2016 license, which I could use on this. Not sure if I'm gonna go there yet, 
But if you've got any questions about what OS are going for, you want to see, you know, how wh what the OS and any details on the OS, and if you want me to put a video up about that, please let me know in the comments down below. If you like the video, please toss a like, and please, 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 don't forget to subscribe. I'm getting close to the thousand subscribers right now, which means I'll be able to, with the right number of viewing hours, I'll be able to do the old um, actual monetization, which I currently can't. So everything I do for the for this channel, I have, comes out of my own pocket, including the servers and all the machines that I build. So it'd be great if you could subscribe and please watch as much videos as you can to get those watch hours up as well. And if you don't do that, I completely understand because you know everybody's got busy lives. But if you could, that would be great. But apart from that, I'm all done. And as always, take care. Thank <laughs> you.